Hey, this is a podcast with me and Witch Force One, also known as Mandy Lidge. It's really, really good. She talks a lot about journeying, which is like the shamanic meditating. And we also talk a lot about, hey, like enlightenment and all that other good stuff that everyone likes, like spirituality. So if you don't enjoy it, you're wrong. See you at a bit. Hello. Ah! Hello. Welcome to the podcast. I'm here with Mandy Leach. I'm about to introduce her, so we just listen to my old introduction. Welcome to the podcast. I'm here with Mandy Leach. She's yeah. called Witch Rules One on Twitter. Yeah. And we recently have become friends. Hi, Aww. Mandy. Hi, Hanjo. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself, perhaps, just uh, in terms of like what you're interested in and what you do? Yeah. Um. Sure. I am a everything's sort of realigning for me. So how to describe exactly what it is, is a little bit tricky. I'm primarily a shamanic pr practitioner. Um, I do an awful lot of journeying. And right now I've been getting connected with a bunch of Buddhists and kind of getting them the hip on the idea of journeying and what is possible there. And in, in terms of like everything, you know, opening up the world, what you can touch, what you can see, what's available. So, uh, just to stop myself here, um, what else do you do, Mandy? Uh... <laughs> um, it's so funny because it's like, uh, I never know how to answer that question. I'm always like, I don't know. Um, I'm a magical theorist. I am, I do tarot cards. I read astrology. I think astrology is super important, but I keep vowing that I'm not going to learn more of it and then learning more and being like, yo, I'm glad I learned that piece too. <laughs> um, I... I'm in a place where I want to build some things, like want to create some cultures, change some lives, give some opportunities to people as things are falling apart and the outside gets bigger. Beautiful, yeah. Um, and yeah, the thing that struck me, I guess, in that intro was just when I was like reflecting on it in the moment, I was like, you're, you're, there's something, there's something of a generalist vibe to you, which I have as well, I think, where it's like, you're always, uh, I don't know, this is how it is for me. It's like, I get a new piece of information. It's like, boom, boom, boom. How do I expand that out to like the, the world? It's like, oh, it's true here. Oh, it's true like this as well. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, very much so. Yeah, like a systems, magical systems. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just throwing out I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Because it is. It is all about systems and about systems ethics and about, um, like, what I really want to be doing is rerouting systems ethics so that we can speak to larger entities so that we can, like, navigate climate change together, right? That's beautiful. I loved it. Yeah. Um, the very pure intent as well reminds me of the channelers for the law of one that were sort of, you know, they have this, like, group synergy and it's yeah. all about sort of like uh, how can we connect to these entities yeah beautiful yeah um let's return back to me for the for the for the little babies out there who don't know <laughs> nothing about journeying what is what is journeying like from the from the like say it's like you know it's my mom she's never done anything spiritual at all how would you explain that to her uh um sure so usually so journeying is part of a trance process that uh, all humans are capable of. Our brains have a technology that is able to trance. And when we enter into alternate states of consciousness, we are able to then journey uh, up and down the realms of reality. We are able to touch into the medicine realms of animals. We are able to learn from the wisdom of the Fae. We're able to visit the realms of deities. Uh, traditionally, shamanically, it's divided into like upper worlds, middle worlds, and lower worlds. And um, I find that the lower worlds are where the earthbound beings are and where you touch their realms. The middle is sort of like us, what we're doing. And the upper worlds are, are deity, celestial, these uh, bit more complex orbiting concepts. And then I've also found that there's like an outside beyond that that you get into. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lower world which is, uh, you say that's like human? A piece humans, to add on top of that. Love to hear um, it. 
So one thing that I should have mentioned at this point in time is that usually we enter into trance through rattling and drumming. And what I think is great about this is that studies have shown that almost anyone will trance within 10 minutes with rattling and drumming. So like if someone is like, I want to check out whether or not I can do this, just go find a really steady frame drum track, track like boom, 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 boom. And you'll go. And like, it is something that gets easy. That part of it gets so much easier. Like I can pick up a maraca and hear the things move. And I start to go like, Ooh. <laughs> so you think there's something even more substantial than the idea of like, Oh, you know, uh, it's like, a condi- like that's what it'd be, it'd be like, Oh, it's like a condition thing. It's like, Oh, you condition yourself to the drum and then the drum, um, like then you hear a drum and it's like, Whoa, I'm going now. Or do you, do you think it's more something, it's more, something more like, um, there's more to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it is like one of those things that works in parallel realms. Cause I think that that, that description has a lot of utility, especially for getting like post rats, rationalists, et cetera, on board with these kind of ideas. Cause you can say like, here's a piece of data that is useful for you. But the, um, the old story is that the drum is the shaman's horse and that you are riding out into these rooms and there's so much beauty there and the drum is alive and the instruments are alive and the music is alive and every single place you put a cut there's an entity and you should work with them that way beautiful i love that yeah um animals um, or... no, oh, go ahead yeah oh wait no, no you're was... talking on the screen i got oh, confused yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lower world is like is like animals like usually and this is where most if you go to see a shaman for a weekend for a retreat you're going to start in your heart center which will be your access mundi your your uh access to the world a lot of people see trees a lot of people see caves a lot of people start just someplace that feels safe and that can be anything and then you go lower and when you go lower you usually are seeking the medicine of an animal to help heal you and uh this can be inner child work and it can be soul loss work and it can also be um like really powerful potent healing work um so just to clarify that you start in the middle world where you're comfortable and then you go to the lower world is that yeah yes exactly and i wanted to add that there's um so let me describe this as thoroughly as possible because what you do is you start in your axis mundi which like if we talk about the chakras as realms, right? Like when I visit my chakras as places, I'm in my middle world, right? And then when I go through these portals, I'm entering into lower worlds. And uh, uh, yeah. And then the next piece of it is that um, usually in this format, there are three different types of animals that you can encounter because there are um, journey animals who are the ones who come to you and take you to the realms of other animals. And these are the ones that you form a really close bond with. My internal pantheon of these guys is mostly um, South American. Like I have an anaconda and a puma and a hawk. And it's very, it's like the mine, like all their animals. They're the ones who come for me. Um, You have the the medicine animals themselves. And that's, you can just pick anybody and they're ready to help you. And they're, that's what they're, they're doing. And then you have power animals, which are the ones that, who are there to like, help you embody an archetype or connect to a special special force or to like be on your team with you in a really like present kind of way. Um, and it's interesting because some people feel uh, really ready to find and connect to a power animal. And some people are like, oh, I don't know about that. And then some people like, um, it's interesting because people will be like, oh, no, 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 you only get one. But it's really like you're open to as much as you need to be open to. Things can come and go. Things can be like, I'm here for you right now. But like, you're actually not going to need this type of support later because I'm going to be so much you that why are you going to even need to think about it? Um, it's been interesting with my own thing for Power Animal because I was looking for one for a while and I've had a gold dragon in my inner landscape showing me all kinds of stuff. I can become their body. We did all kinds of things together. We traveled. They taught me magics. And I have kept just waiting for a natural animal to show up and be like, I'm your power animal. And then I was like, wait, I was just not letting myself have this dragon because I was expecting that it would be like something, I don't know, normal. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. Um, so, uh, what's the, so there's sort of like, there's journeying, 
And then there's also like astral projection. So what's mm-hmm. kind of the, re- the relationship between those? Uh, just to give you a bit of um, astral projection um, for me, and my understanding is you just go out into like the upper. Yeah, realms, that's I what I was, that yeah. was what I was gonna say because my because um, in journeying, I really feel the inward thrust of the movement. Right, like you are going into yourself, and there you're able to find all of the connections to the cosmos, whereas in astral travel, like, you really are motivating up and out, like, whew, you feel, you feel that movement as part of it. Um, I do think that it's an underexplored territory, whether the upper world and astral travel are actually just exactly the same thing, like, it's not really discoursed about very much. Um, in my experience, when I've gone up into the realms of the gods, I ha- it has been an astral travel experience as well. So that's interesting to me because, like, really, I've spoken to a bunch of shaman who use this structure, and I've done a bunch of reading, and people just kind of don't talk about the upper world. They kind of just don't talk about it. I think it's fascinating. I've noticed this is that same thing. It's, um, there's a barrier, I think, for entry, which is like non human intelligence exists. And once you're past mm-hmm. that barrier, all of a sudden, you know, there's so much open. You're like, oh, everything's intelligent. And, you know, I can go to these upper realms and there's gods and goddesses. And it, when it doesn't, and there's, you can know that and be like, oh, yeah, the gods are real. Um, even people who are doing practice with their gods, but, there's something that hasn't clicked for them, which is like, oh, this is like a real being, like a person like me that has its own like awareness, like intention, like will, um, problems, even, you know, like biases, like perspectives, like its own way of doing things, its own place that it lives. And there's, there's no, there's not really any way that you can conceptually get to that point. I think unless you connect in a substantial way to the awareness of a non-human intelligence and be like, it's real, Ah!" you know? And then all of a sudden it's like, ah, like this all makes sense now. Yeah. Life just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That makes sense too. Cause like, um, I think a lot of the early journeying that I was doing was moving me closer into that realm and deeper to those types. Cause like, um, not everybody's doing the same stuff with their journey. The journey meets you where you are and works on the things that you need to be working on, right? And so, like, I was dying and becoming cosmic soup, and people were, like, playing with an animal in their heart, which is not wrong. It's beautiful. It's so healing and kind and gentle. But, like, I would become... This kind of got a little rough with the circle, actually, because I started to feel like maybe I shouldn't be sharing as much. I wasn't certain if it was for them, and I wasn't certain if uh it was useful to to share that level of experience where it's like because there's also there's multiple layers of becoming another entity too i've noticed from people's experience because there's sort of the like we're in pure imagination land and we can get a lot done there and then there's like the i've been a tree and i know what that is you know and there's like there, there's definitely a, a difference there between like the gentle fabrication of the idea and the expansive encounter of what it can actually be and how it can rearrange you. Beautiful, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be interested. We uh, this is time. So I should say it's another time, but I'd be I'd be interested to see how we could get something going over over Zoom or something. Because all yeah. of my stuff is super, it's so, it's so clean and easy over Zoom. Uh, I'm guessing it'd be the same, yeah? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah, anyway. Very interesting, yeah. Mm. I love me. So, yeah, the good <laughs> thing about this format is I can kind of uh, just sort of be quiet and think about questions, and then my future self is going to be able to talk over the silence. But then I interrupt myself and all goes wrong, but anyway. <laughs> I got no awareness of yeah. my future self. This is not what I wanted at all in this situation. <laughs> Be silent. I'm going to inter- I'm not even going to talk. I know he's going to talk. So when you go into these lower realms, um, uh. and you're you're journeying with animals, um, is it like literal, like literal, like you know, is it like the fox that I see on my walks? Am I journeying with the fox, or is it like a fox spirit or like a fox deity? Like, what is it, or is it or like a super fox, like all the foxes combined? Uh, 
Um, so what a good question. I just want to say super fox. Like that's that needs to be a thing. Like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a a s a p yeah. Let me think, because I've had yeah. I've had many different types of encounters, and really like. I feel like we're touching into the essence of most often, right? So like um, one of a journey that I go back to a lot is I, I uh, journeyed with polar bear and with polar bear, I touched the witnessing consciousness of a species going through extinction. And this polar bear was the primordial polar bear. It was absolutely massive. I was smaller than its eyeball. Um, and it gave me this like piece of perspective and time I, this was also a journey where I got a dismemberment. Dismemberment is amazing. It's um, you get ripped limb from limb, uh, and then you get put back together, and all of the things that were ailing you are gone. It may be very bloody and feel like it. We, I've described it to a bunch of people, and they're always like, "It sounds terrifying," but like so much peace and so much joy and such like a, a only healing comes with it. But like while that's happening, like you're rib cage is being like devoured by a polar bear and it's like flopping back and forth and stuff so there's you know you got to be ready and comfortable for those sorts of things i think <laughs> um and then i'm trying to think because there was a time that i journeyed with because ultimately the way that i think about these entities is that they are spirit is this massive rhizome and it is looking for a vessel to occupy and so we are creating containers for it to give, uh, to move information across between these layers of understanding. And so when you say we're journeying with polar bear, then a medicine that represents this idea is able to fill the container that you've created, right? And that's related to polar bear, but it might also come from all of these other places and just the willingness to fill that container. Um, and so one of the experiences that I feel like was most like that is when I journeyed with otter and it didn't really feel like I was connecting to primordial otter. It felt like I was connecting with these fey beings that wanted to heal my inner child. And uh, it still had very otter energy and very playful and very loving and very tender and very family um but it didn't have that same like i'm tapped into the total consciousness of these types of entities as other like as i got with when i did polar bear as i got when i've done elephants uh several other animals um just before i just interrupt myself um Witnessing consciousness and like total consciousness, it seems like you're pointing to something that isn't consciousness <laughs> when you're saying that. Could you uh, maybe just give some words on what witnessing consciousness is? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Witnessing, so like with the polar bear specifically and this witnessing sense, it was like being made of something where most of it no longer existed in time and having this complete surrender to the rest of it joining that body which was like you know um and then with the total, it's like moving into the like archetypal forms that contain these animal expressions where like, it's, it's more like maybe the animal is like the tip of the funnel and you're like going up to the, the top. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, just uh, maybe uh, a little bit of grievance sharing. Um, it it seems like to me like when we get into the like details like this, people just aren't. Uh, they just don't. They just not. I don't know what it is. They just don't get it or something. They're not interested. But it's the only thing I'm interested in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see what I have to say in response. Super to cool. It. Yeah. So it Super sounds cool. like um yeah, it's almost like there is a. In the same way that for humans, there's sort of like us and then like gods for like polar bear. There's like polar bear and then like gods. And that's yeah. kind of who you're hanging out with. Just to correct myself here. There's something that I'm trying to get at, which is really, really hard to put into words. And it's something to do with this like funnel 
funneling like fractal idea where it's like we we are able to tune into these parts of ourselves that are existent at higher levels mm-hmm. um and animals are too is is like the thing that i'm trying to say but the part where it, like the the concept of like self into like guides into like future self into like higher self into like cosmic self um and then the way that's all sort of like interrelated and working together to help each other it's hard to yeah i can't manage it yeah yeah no but that's exactly like that's the way i feel and experience it though so like i get what you're pointing at even if it's hard to articulate it um another thing that it calls to mind for me is um and this is again this is more like in this realm slash in blending the space between realms is you ever been out in the wild and met an animal and you're like this animal contains more awareness than most of its peers right and uh i feel a lot of affinity with those animals like they're the shaman like it's a shaman squirrel right like it's carrying more awareness for its people the same way i'm carrying more awareness for my people (laughs) that's beautiful i really love that yeah Mm, love to meet like a shaman god or something yeah anyway uh. yeah, yeah oh my god yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. that's just a universe maybe <laughs> Ooh, yeah unless you like slip into a fey realm and then they're like oh you wanted otters we can be otters yeah um, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and just to give some clarity for the, i enjoyed myself i was saying there's like the higher self thing um and, but then there's also the fey realm thing which seems like a different thing yeah um so what what's the kind of felt sense that happens to actually your body? if i could jump yeah, in yeah, go ahead. Um, so because for me so when i talk about like fey and fey realms like fey for me are primarily uh creatures that arise in the interstitial space of agreement so like uh, they are created by making agreements and then they exist to hold them. And this is how their stories have functioned across time and why they are so much wild nature. And then as wild nature becomes constrained, they start to do household stuff is because they're like, well, we still need to exist in the space of agreement. So now instead of it, us being um, between the mycelium and the tree and arising as like a little brownie or something, we now work for the shoemaker and we exist between like the client and the promise to make a shoe. Beautiful, yeah, that's really beautiful. And so there's agreement. Um, and how is an agreement formed with the Fae? Um, it is, it, so it's formed through dreaming intention basically right like there is a yearning desire these are things i've experienced in journey too i went to a council of all beings which was um they were all material animals and then i watched the fate that like the bear and the salmon had an agreement about you know about being eaten and then there's a fae you know and it arises and one of the experiences that i had was becoming a fae from being a plant i was a plant and i had a yearning to have a certain type of experience. Now, in in the journey, the yearning was to be soup, but that was just like a metaphor. It didn't, it wasn't that I actually wanted to be soup, but it was like, I then motivated up from the plant consciousness state into an embodied entity who is able to move back and forth to fulfill these agreements that were uh, brought into being from my yearning. And I think this is sort of the, primordial fabric of how we get material in the first place is that we have these feelings senses yearnings and we start to make agreements and a lot of that happens in spirit and then it starts to take material form over to like it it's detritus building up on itself and then that starts to generate its own meaning and its own being and its own presence and awareness um a metaphor like a an idea came to me it's like you an agreement is sort of like a gravitational like hooking in and then mm-hmm. it's like then you're yeah. like doing this to each other, and yes. yeah, and they they're like they're like doing the thing that hooks you together. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Mm. Uh. And yeah, maybe. Uh. Mm, well, does it? No. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
So, what what's the kind of felt sense that happens to your body when you're going through these journeys, and how aware of it are you during the process? Oh, very. What is the felt sense that is I just <laughs> every everywhere is uh... question. Um, <laughs> I would say that across my practice, I've actually moved away from bodily awareness because at first, when I started, it was less that I was seeing visions and less that I was even like necessarily perceiving like a narrative and more that I was feeling senses in my body. And then uh, it would start to come together into what was happening. And it would be sort of like, um, oftentimes like a zooming around, like a, like a, oh, it's over here. Now it's over here. Um, a little bit of fluidity, a little bit of uh, like an energy starting somewhere and then moving, bubbling up maybe. Um, I, I don't really understand this. Is that like, so, uh, so you're like sort of trancing and then you're like feeling energy move. Do you mean? Yeah. 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 So when I first started, it was very much like I would lie down and it would be like, my eyes would be like flinchy, almost like a REM sleep kind of thing, but not really. And then in my body, it would be like, like, oh, there's a tingle of awareness up over here on my shoulder, right? And then I feel it move. And then I know in a flash that the moving of that energy was actually this like thread of story that starts to make itself clear to me. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes a little bit of vertigo. But then um, as I got better and better at it, it started to become more anchored in the experience of the realm that I was in and less anchored in the experience of the body. And now I can go and experience like lifetimes of time. Yeah. So it sounds like this is actually, you know, like a, a fundamental skill, like you're saying. And before I get into that, just to like um, this, this sort of transition from like being person that isn't, um, that is like in their body a bit, to like being someone who's journeying like like they're actually there um it sounds like that's a process of unification so it's like you're uh, and this is something i've noticed too whenever I, if i want to go into a hypnagogic state um then the process is of my energy body and my experience and my like mind all becoming one so it's like as as a thing moves like an orb flies across my vision like 14 different energy centers resolve something and become healed. Um, and it's like, it's not like they're happening simultaneously. It's that that experience is, is the one thing that's happening. Um, mm. And if I wasn't as in it, then I would be able to break it down. And then it's like, as I'm coming out of that, it's kind of like a reestablishing of the separateness. So it's like, Oh, there was like visuals. And then my energy body was doing this. And my present, like my, the story was doing this, but, uh, and they, they all seem like um, things that are happening so kind of concurrently. But when you're in it, it's like, you know, it's all one thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very much so, which is how I think um, that time experience thing I was talking about can happen. Because it's like, it's not like it's undetailed, like living 13, 20, 50 year chunks of time, right? Like it's happening and all of that information is being delivered to me but i journey like this journey circle from when your head hits the pillow to when you stop is usually 40 minutes you know like yeah um yeah it makes sense right like you um you're not just unifying your senses you're unifying your actual like space-time thing yeah. that you are uh, and then you can anything can happen <laughs> and this is kind yeah. of uh, uh, something I noticed um, and uh, almost always been a bit scientific about it's like the more that I dilate time um, like make time not go normal the more psychedelic my visuals get yeah, yeah that, that makes total sense to me one of the definitions that I used for magic very early on was the ability to make conscious decision in smaller and smaller units of time, like tiny and tiny, tiny. 
Um, but I don't necessarily, yeah, I don't necessarily stand by it as a total definition anymore, but it's such an important piece of the working because the more presence you come into, the more you can just diffract a million timelines off of one single pivot from that awareness. It's really powerful. That's, that's really, yeah, that's really beautiful. That's exactly like my experience as well with like, um, this, the, the leveling up of my spiritual path has been like, um, first step, it's like, oh, there's a thing. Like, let me examine this and be like, oh, why is this here? What's this doing? Uh, is this real? What's going on here? And it's in that kind of time. And then I'm like here and I'm like, what's it going to be? You know, it's like I'm doing like 50 questions every yep. second. And now it's at the point where it's like, I'm doing like 10 million questions a second. Then it just goes like, awareness, focus of questioning in 10, <laughs> like it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is like one of the places that I'm really obsessed is like, so there's more of us out there, right? Soul structure, oversoul, whatever we want to think about it as. And I am just like, everything I've done has been about bringing more of that home into this body. And I feel like journeying, um, each step of it, of going deeper is, a, is drawing more of that awareness, those higher level capacities, like making it so that I'm in a higher degree of concert and communication at all times with those, you know, higher self, over soul, monad, whatever, you know, degrees of cutting it up. We want to, we want to make it, but um, yeah, it's really interesting because like before I had that level of integration, it was where things were more difficult with the journeying and then sort of like the more I bring home the easier and easier it gets yeah mm. great where yeah you're entering I mean the the body appears to be in a trance state I guess but you, what, you're, what you're doing is you're journeying between between realms uh, yeah. and that's why it's called journeying yeah which makes sense yeah yeah um, yeah and it sounds like, yeah, so, and then the better you get at it, the more that you're sort of able to be in that place. And I guess sort of like, uh, yeah, you're like, in, and not not need to be in, in this place as much. Um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. have you had any experiences where uh, you were journeying and it was like, hold up, like, there's some kind of interference or like, something's uh going wrong or is it always been like oh no i'm just being sort of guided and helped by these uh entities that i want to be um like how often are you sort of reorienting yourself back to what you wanted compared to you know it's like or or is it just like oh i want something oh it happens uh yeah <clears throat> so this reminded me i wanted to share um at the beginning of 2020, in the last in-person journeying circle before the pandemic started, um, we had, it was like our New Year journey. And we had done New Year journey, like I had started just over a year ago and I had gone every single session. And um, my first year journey, it was like, I went on a boat and I got like, grains of sand and I got initiated through all of these different elements and it was really empowering and everybody's experience was really empowering. 2020, everybody had a really dark journey for the beginning of the year. Mine, like I got ripped apart by this earth entity. This is where I became the Fae, but then the Fae creature went crazy. It like, cause it lost its loop and it was like this, the degeneration of the loops across time. And it had like sort of this virus mind thing happening with it. And like, uh, it was also like, I got a lot of power and presence delivered to me through that journey, but it was, everyone came in and the group was just like really quiet and somber and austere in a way that we hadn't been. And everybody shared just like teeny tiny snippets about it and nobody shared a ton. And then 2020 was the way that 2020 was. And I was like, well, I guess we all... <laughs> I guess when we journeyed with the energy of the year, we all actually got a very good uh, taste of what was coming. Yeah, and and in that, I'm I'm sensing it's sort of like there's dark journeys, but we're always just sort of 
this manifestation of our consciousness and intent. So it's like, hey, it's a dark journey and there's like dark entities and it's scary and bad. Um, but really, uh, there's safety in recognizing that we're all just this one source and like there's confidence in that as well. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Which is like, just like, uh, I mean, just like with everything that's been the ultimate lesson of most of my journeys, like the first journey I went on, I was initiated by a bat shaman dissolved into the, into cosmic oneness and then reborn as a bat. But it was like, the bat stuff was really cool, but I was like, wait, I've been the soup of the universe. What? <laughs> How do I get more of that? <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah, because um, uh, maybe maybe it's a little too far away from what we were talking about in the podcast but um yeah it's it's interesting how uh it's sort of like this unification is sort of the goal of a lot of meditation and, and it sounds like it's also like hey you can just do that by journeying does that sound yeah yes yeah. i a lot of times i talk like here's the thing is that i um i've done sort of a survey of magic where i researched i was just like i see that chaos magic is effective i see that law of attraction is effective i see that this is effective i see that that is effective and then i went out and i like consumed a bunch from different practitioners and read a bunch and trying to extract what was really valuable from them and um i think it's true in meditation but it's especially true in western magic i watch these western magic people and like god love them but they're such asshats and like just put on some drums you don't need to like spend five years preparing to become the headless god. You could just journey. <laughs> right. It's like um, the ceremonies become detached from the goal, which is to have magic happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And like, it's all really like um, a lot of the high magic and Western magic is uh, all of it is looking for oneness, is looking for different levels of unification, whether it's to be the headless god with eyes in your feet or to seek the inner union through Hiragamas. And all of it, you can do probably your first week of shamanic journey. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, and it's, I feel like it's actually a reflection of the culture which has sort of sprung up over the last couple thousand years, which is like hierarchy like you you are you start at the bottom and then you like dominate your way to the top where you're the top dog and then the top dog gets all the good stuff and it's like mm -hmm. hey you don't actually have to do that whole thing you can just have the thing that you want you don't need you don't need the hierarchy you don't need the um but the the kind of sort of requirement implicit requirement is like hey you gotta let go of all of that attachment to like this uh the culture that's sort of been given to you and your expectations of how things should go where you're like in school basically doing your doing your magic or spiritual practice it's like you don't have to be in school but that's yeah. a long lesson to learn <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, well honestly it's such a long lesson to learn that what i did with my school was like i went and i got a master's where i taught myself how not to be in school like that was mostly what i like i did a critique of industrial education i like rewilded myself and studied ecofeminism i like went and communed with the god of a city and like all of these wild things just to like break down the structures but like i also paid like a hundred thousand dollars for some to do that you know <laughs> It sounds like the best way to spend an education, at least. Um, but well, that's yeah. the thing. I listen to these people who didn't spend their education money on develop on on getting more soul, right? And I I can't relate to it at all. I'm like, well, but why? You know, but why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but why is a big deal, I think, in culture right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like <laughs> seek enlightenment. It'll be better. You'll have more fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh um, my gosh, I just wish I could talk to a bunch of 50. I sometimes I have fantasies about like being an anti military recruiter where I just like go and stand there and I'm like, have you heard of enlightenment? Did you know that <laughs> you could go woofing instead of going to college? Like just stuff like that. <laughs> I would have loved to meet someone like that. I'd be like, whoa, what? Yeah. I'm exactly. going to ignore this, but it's in the back of my head now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I missed what you said there. Like, cut out. Oh, just planting little seeds. Oh, planting know? little seeds, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Mm. Um, 
What the fuck That's did really I ask? To what you want been like, oh no, I'm just being sort of guided and helped by these oh, yeah. uh, entities that I want to be. Um, like, how often are you sort of reorienting yourself back to what you wanted compared to, you know, it's like, or, or is it just like, oh, I want something? Oh, it happens. Uh, yeah. Um, that's a really interesting question too, because, um, a lot of it is sort of centered around intention and like so much of this, where if I didn't have the best intention, but I have a really intense feeling that needs, needs to take place. It's like, uh, everything automatically goes to that and knows what it needs to happen. But if I go in kind of wobbly and I don't really need much, it can be, um, a lot more trippy, a lot more like, where am I going? A lot more, oh wait, is that what I actually wanna be doing right now? Um, although that can happen in ones that feel like maybe they do have a significant healing. There was one where um, I kept like, it was seals and we were selkies and I was a selkie, but I kept ending up back in the house where they had my cloak, my seal skin. Um, and it kept happening over and over and over again until I burned the house down. And then I was like, oh, I guess that was what needed to happen. But also like, is that really what I wanted to do here? So that was an interesting, that's like a, a really mild example of this. Cause like I was at that point working with a journey circle and a shaman who kept a very safe container. Nothing really weird happened in, uh, in Kathy's circle. She was doing a wonderful job. Uh, I've done it to aid some people before and um, ended up like fully outside of things. I watched one of my friends had a, a outsider type entity that was like reaching into her and um, it didn't seem malicious, but it also didn't have consent. And so like I was in this opportunity to uh, create a bubble around her and communicate to it that it needed to figure out consent if they were going to work together. Um, but that was, I was trying to work with her on her chronic illness and I had been sort of in, um, you know how at like, if you go to Disney or something, there's like a dark ride, you know, the concept of a dark ride. So uh, I sent her on a journey that was like a dark ride. And then I was like up in the machinery of the dark ride, tweaking and fixing things as we went. And then I was whew, all the way outside and it was like, oh, okay, that's not what I thought we were doing or what I thought was going to happen here, but it really clarified what she was dealing with in a way that neither of us had been aware of. So so you went outside of the dark ride that she was in, which is like a dark roller coaster. And then yeah. she's and then you were like controlling it, but then you were like not controlling it anymore. And she was just dark riding by herself. Yeah. So oh, she's still fun. And just for further clarification, which I now understand, it's like you're you were like you're like now in your body. You're not even in a journey anymore. Hmm? Right. Yeah. What, what was the oh, oh, so when you mean by outside, you mean completely outside of the journey, like you're not even journeying anymore. You're not even like. Oh, part no, of no, it. no. I meant so like outside of the lower realms, like I was in another dimension, like I oh. was, <laughs> I was outside. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's really interesting. So it's like you got you got taken to like where you needed to be to manage the journey better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Super cool. I'd like to do more of this type of journeying because um, she's a advanced Reiki practitioner too. So like she was competently handling her own experience while I was feeding, aiding, negotiating it. And then it went out into that further perspective. And I've, uh, I've done some more journeys that aid people where like, we get that back and forth synergy where I'm able to feed into them and, and like get a read on what's happening for them. But like, it's, I mostly want to work with other practitioners. I want to help people who are already doing it. I want to work with people who've got really high power and see what we can do together. You know? <laughs> yeah. It, I think there's a point that you get to with any kind of relationship where if you're not aligned with like the depth of your intent and where you want to go, it just gets a bit grating. You're like, ah, oh, this is not, it's like, it was fun for the thing, but it's just, I need to, you need the synergy. Yep. Yeah. You need the resonance. I think is what it is really. And, and that's, that's more like a, just like literal function of how energy works. It's like, if you have that resonance, then you're generating energy for each other. And if you don't have it, then you're just using up energy. And it, the feeling of it getting grating and draining is just a literal, you just don't have energy for it anymore. It's just literal. Yeah. 
As an overgiver, that's so sad to think about in here. <laughs> I I've been through many trolls. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, in and it worked out really like her journey. Um, I sent her to the medicine realm of snake. Um, we found some soul pieces and inner child work that needed to be done. It was beautiful because when we talked about it afterwards, like we did it like separately but at the same time and then when we talked about it afterwards um she told me what she experienced first and then I was like I sent you those little girls I found those pieces <laughs> um which is always like such a beautiful confirmation and then when we got to the outside she or when I got to the outside and was working with this entity she told me that she had an alien past life uh that she had been trying to work with integrating and it wants more control. And I was like, well, that's absolutely what I saw us dealing with, at least like maybe it's soul structure, not it's actual like entity self, but. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it, you almost say, yeah. <laughs> Where am I? Where am I? I think got intention. Yeah. Mm. I think you were so riveting in what you were saying just before. I actually, usually I can maintain focus on what I'm going to ask, but I just completely lost. I was like, whoa, this journey is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's okay. I, I give myself space here to be like, hey, no, I can talk and now I'm going to talk. Yeah. So I was, I've been trying to figure this out for a while. And the, the thing I figured out is if I go mm, like before I can, before I talk, then I can like, I'm like, oh. I can stop talking in this incarnation now and let that, that person talk. Yeah. Uh, but I can't do it usually because I get, I'm so excited. I'm, I have something, um, here we go. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Me. It's okay. Yeah. I'm not interrupt myself. <laughs> um, fine. There's something that I think is quite interesting, which is like this, um, it's pretty familiar. Like this is actually a pretty familiar thing for me for psychedelics where it's like, yeah, your intention matters, um, but ultimately you're being put into contact with entities and then it's kind of like they're the ones guiding the journey. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I feel like it's kind of about, the, there's like two levels of alignment. There's alignment between you and the entity in what you're like both interested in doing. Uh, and then there's sort of like alignment with the cosmos as well. Where it's yeah. like you're 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 both interested in what the the natural thing for the universe to do is, which is like healing and like unifying. Um, yeah, so just curious if you could talk on that a little bit, just like yeah. the, the role of it, intention. Yeah. So this made me think um, immediately of another journey I had, and um, the try to interrupt Mandy there. That was yeah, perfect. Story time. We're having such a good conversation. This is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We are. Mm. Yeah, and then and then we have an extra interesting conversation in the. For some reason, I noticed it's always the meta commentary is always so much. Um, there's something extra. There's something extra in it, especially the introduction. It's like um, people watch back every time anyone watches back their introduction, the first introduction. They're like, uh, I can let me just do this right this time, and it's always so much better. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just wanted to put out it's like this this idea that like the. Like what the universe wants is like y unity. Um, I feel like that's it's it was really well put by me and shown with the hands where it's like things don't want to be separate. They just don't want to be separate. They wanna they wanna be unified because once they're unified, they disappear and then no more suffering. So like yeah. the the suffering is separateness, no suffering, not separateness, and then gravity is the attraction towards um non-separateness yeah yes yes very much so i love that explanation it's very good i do think there is and like the um because i feel the other impulse and obviously this is at a level of subsystem not at a level of like universe because we aren't united anymore but the diffraction has its own level of desire where it's because there's the let's stop existing so that we can cease all suffering. And then there's the like, let's make as much more of this as we possibly can so that we can experience each other. Right. But that is part of the desire towards oneness itself because it becomes like more to integrate. Right. Like if there's more that's unknown, there's more to bring back in. I, I think it's a really, really interesting impulse because it, it is like, 
just this profound want to diffract into little pieces with the ultimate desire of those being perfected and absorbed back in. That's beautiful. Yeah. And then I, I feel like there's, um, now you put it this way, it, I, I could put it into like a nice little, um, is like, there's the desire for non-separation. Um, and there's also the desire for the infinite to keep continuing. And everything has that desire for it to keep continuing. And the keep continuing desire, like the thoughts want to keep continuing, the body wants to keep continuing, is actually a reflection of the desire for the infinite, which is this infinite separateness thing that you're talking about. Where it's like, um, every single thing, like, must be unique. It's like a uniqueness requirement. If, if it stops um, diffracting, um, then it stops being unique. And you can see that in sort of like a fractal. It's like... The fractal is all one thing, but it's always different the deeper you, you go. Um, and that's sort of like the combination of those things. Yeah, it's like the uniqueness and the non-separateness are, are co-present and happening simultaneously. Absolutely. It reminds um, me of uh, a, a Goethe quote I really liked is um, he was observing plants and he noticed that the plant is all one thing differentiated. And I encountered this so early in my journey and I was like, that's everything. That's the universe. <laughs> oh, one thing differentiated. That's really great. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. There's another thing I was going to mention. Oh yeah. And the intelligence. <laughs> so there's non, non separate desire for non separateness, desire for infinite uniqueness. And then there's the intelligence, which is the, um, the function. It's like the thing that, that makes that happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let me get the thing on before I start tripping. This is again with a journeying circle. And let's talk about that as another dimension, right? Cause like you have you and the entity that you're working with, you have the egregore that your circle is creating. You have the flow and intention of the universe. And this was one where we were going with Dragonfly and um, the egregore was creating this really ancestral intention. And I went into this cottage and in this cottage, there was my dead grandparents. There were like my lineage, all these other things. And then there was a little hatch in the floor. And I like was like, fuck you, grandma. And I, go, <laughs> and I go through the hatch in the floor and I'm in the hypogeum. And uh, oh, it's uh, it's in Malta. It's one of it's a it's an ancient uh, megalith. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so I'm in the hypogeum, and there's some theories that the hypogeum was used for dreaming, for, for journeying. Oh, wow. And I lay down in the hypogeum, and Dragonfly ate away all the film on my third eye. Oh, and that wow. was a much better use of my time than, like, sitting down and talking to my grandma, you know? <laughs> That's really beautiful. So it sounds like, you know, in psychedelics, it's kind of like... And just to clarify, me saying, oh, wow, it's actually, like, that's actually, like, a, mm, a response that my mouth just makes when I'm my body's going through a, a big, beautiful, transformative change. It's like, Ooh. oh, wow. It's like, a, yeah. Mm. So I didn't even notice that I said it in the exact same tone three times in a row. It's because each thing you were saying, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, that wow. was a much better use of my time than like sitting down and talking to my grandma, you know? <laughs> That's really beautiful. So it sounds Grandma, like Grandma, she's you know, probably like in spirit being like Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I I was all ready for like the hangout. It's like she'd got all the yeah. food ready for the for the, the yeah, and then you just hop down the hatch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like um it's her house though, and she put the hatch there. You know? Yeah. Oh beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You set your intention before the trip, or you like write some vows about what you want. It's like, and then it's like you go into it and you kind of get like hooked up to an entity, and then it's like you're there for the ride. It's like 12 mm -hmm. hours of that. But it sounds like yeah. in journeying, it's more like, I want to go here. No, I want to go here. No, actually, no, we're going to go here. Uh, and maybe yeah. not super consciously, but it's like there's more, yeah, there's more paths open. Does that sound? So this sounds correct most of the time. I'm going to tell a story that I already told you because uh, it was one time where um, so I had just uh, rogued some powers from a, a lover, actually. Rogued? Yeah, like Rogue the X-Men. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I rogue powers all the time. Yeah. Um, I used to call it stealing because it's like a, I, 
I can just energetically connect to people and just be like, oh, they do it like this. Um, but yeah, that's fun, Rogue. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I had like or a site that was way clearer than I'm used to and I had um it, a bunch of other things that were happening and it was the first time that I started to astral project to like I just like whoops slipped up with my back body I was like oh, okay um and this is at the journeying circle like while we're doing chakra clearing I just felt myself start to detach and I was like okay I guess this is going to be the journey but then we start doing the journey and I'm like no no no, porcupine medicine so I like try to I dive myself back to the earth and I'm in the mud with the porcupine and it's like a regular animal porcupine and we dig through the mud and we go through a hole and then we come out and we're in like Narnia and now he's like a Narnia type porcupine he's got a little waistcoat and it's got little holes through it because he's porcupine and he shows me his porcupine babies and he makes me tea and stuff and then he's like play with my babies I have to go outside I look out the window and he's digging a grave outside and um he buries me in the grave and these massive hands reach through the dirt and pluck me back up into astral travel because instead of hanging out with porcupine I was supposed to go to the orgy of creation and that's where I found myself instead so like I didn't have as much I I tried to redirect and the entity was like, no, 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 that's not actually what we're doing this time. But usually, and especially when it's like that strong lower world connection, I feel a lot like I could decide not to. I tend not to be someone who decides not to, but listening to other people's stories about journeying, there's a lot of active decision like, oh, no, no, that sounds scary, or oh, no, no, let me put a block here for myself, or I don't really know what will occur at this place, or I just want to stay here and have fun, you know? You know? There's an example of that. It's from the same dragonfly journey where I blew off my grandma. Um, I had started very early on having um, the body transformative experiences of a dragonfly. So like from the nymph in the water and into the dragonfly and bursting out of the wings and all of that stuff. I sort of collapsed the experience because I was like, I've done a lot of animal transformation. It's fun and all. But like, it's not really what I'm trying to do right now. So I was like, give this all to me, but give it all to me like instantaneously. And then we're going to move on and go do something else. That's really interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I do have a, I do have a name uh, for, for what I know, what I do, maybe what you do as well. Uh, uh, like scientific spiritualist. Because there's mm. this, the scientific aspect, which is like, how does this actually work in reality? And then yeah. there's the spiritualist aspect, which is like uh, mystical, mystical, and like giving up to deities and things like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we have a similar yeah. mind in that aspect. Yeah. Yes, I've appreciated that very much. <laughs> mm. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure. Yeah, being open and surrendering is the better option usually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> it's better so, option. You've yeah. spoken a bit. Um, uh, I want to tell, this is just a really a cute little, apparently this is journeying story hour, but that's all right. Um, I, one of the people who I journey with, um, he, his very first time, he went down like a long corridor and into the earth and he comes up to this wall and the wall is made out of river pebbles and he got really obsessed with the, the texture and touching it with his hands. But that was his entire journey. And then he comes out and he's like, so I don't really know what it meant. And I'm like, you stonewalled yourself. You literally stonewalled yourself. <laughs> That's so interesting that he didn't know what it, what it meant as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, he is very interesting because he um, receives data primarily visually already. And so if he's feeling an emotion, he'll see a picture, but he doesn't necessarily think symbolically about those. Like I had to teach him to think symbolically about those things. And then sometimes it's still at a place where he'll be like, I saw this, this, and this. And I'll be like, oh, I can interpret it for you. I don't know why you didn't interpret it, but okay. <laughs> I think some sim sim symbology and like symbology and it's sort of like the language of the subconscious. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, women are better. Um, <laughs> but second of all, it's like, yeah, that, that is a, like a skill to be connected to your subconscious and like know, know the language. And it's not, it's not like, um, you there's like learning, you know, you like, you can go online and be like, oh, like this means this, but really it's a, it's a fluency with that realm, uh, yeah. that comes from connection and experience. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, 
it's interesting talking to people who aren't aware of spirituality really about the things that I do because they'll be like asking about dream interpretation, for example. And it's very much that thing where it's like, well, you could go look it up, but that's not what it means. What it means is what it means to you and what your goal is, is to become fluent in that language and how that language works to translate across different, across the medium to other types of entities and how they translate back to you. Cause that's, this is actually my sweet spot is like finding the weirdest entities I can and figuring out what they like, how they communicate, how to understand it, how to take it in. Like when I worked with the city, um, it would be very different now. But when I worked with the city, I did art and it's uh, like, it was an industrial city where weaving was the main thing. And I made weaving like spiral weaving art. And then I allowed like all of the meaning to rise up to me from that transfer, because that was one of the primary languages of the city. And it was a language that I could learn to speak with it with. And that's, uh, that's what interests me about all of these intersections where it's like, well, how do I get better at speaking to you? Cause sometimes you encounter something and you're like, can you slow down and get better at speaking to me? And it feels so rude and so ignorant. <laughs> Yeah, and I think this is, um, I know I didn't even mention it yet in the podcast, but it's like this, um, uh, with like healers and people who are interested in benefiting others, um, this kind of framework where it's like me, you, the relationship, three things. And it's like, um, getting good at building relationships is actually like a fundamental skill of spirituality because everything is intelligent and a being so it's like yeah. um yeah so it's the and i think that's the missing link where like for the for for a lot of people they're in a world where it's them and there's others and there isn't there isn't a a fluency in relationship so like things and, happen and it just doesn't yeah and oftentimes they're engaging a spiritual perspective that indulges or deepens that solipsism where like everything is created by you. And like, there's a layer at which all of that is true, but that is not the layer at which we need to interface in order to like thrive and help others and accomplish what we're here to accomplish. And um, the more they think about like, I don't know, it just ends up in this really twisted place where they're still sort of looking for permission to themselves for gods to be real, you know? And you're like, me, like we're in a sing song of allowing them to take up more space, but we aren't like raw creating from the power of our mind into nothingness, right? Like we aren't. I don't know. I feel like people are just locked in that, like, maybe I'm still a brain in a jar, but they're practicing meditation and reading about the Buddha and all of these other things, but they haven't. And you talked about this a little bit, I think a little later in what we're watching. They just haven't recognized it. The least useful perspective for me has been, hey, like, I am a brain and I use my brain to make things real. It's like... There's very lit, like there's there's a place you can go where that's true. You know, you you can get somewhere with it, but it's like it's not useful, not useful. Yeah, and for me, it's all about useless because I'm a spiritual science guy, uh, <laughs> which I'm learning about myself. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, how like um, each chakra in your body is like a place being. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm kind of relating that to these like realms. Like you go to porcupine realm. And it's like, there must be like a realm being as well. Yeah. Uh, and also, yeah, you have experience with the place beings in, in 3D illusion as well. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'm curious about your thoughts about like, um, like how does an entity and a place being kind of differ in how they uh, appear? Us. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. What a what a great question. I believe that we are all place minds at holonically refracted different scales, right? So um, when I'm in this sort of situation where I'm going to the medicine realm of an animal, right? The medicine realm is like the larger body and they're like the cells functioning inside of it. And uh, there are different ways at which I can like access those levels of intelligence. And I can say, okay, well, I'm gonna hang out with the critters or I'm going to like hang out with the place, you know? Beautiful, yeah. So it's, that seems really related to what you're saying about collapsing the experience into like, hey, let me just experience this now. Would you say that's like a skill is like doing this thing with like more diffracted, less diffracted? 
Mm. Yeah, definitely. Because like, because ultimately at a high enough degree of fidelity, you're able to flow amongst all of these things, right? And so like, I can hang out with the realm, I can also fuse into the realm. And if I fuse into the realm, I like, I have not tried it this way. Now I'm going to try it because this is a really good experiment. I think if I fuse into the realm, I can receive all of the information, story, medicine, boom, instantaneously. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's 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 one for the future for sure. Yeah. Uh. Sort of like a fractal. But in the same way, like we're we're a body and we have like um energy centers or like parts of ourselves mm -hmm. uh you know the the realms that we're in we're like the the parts of ourselves of the realm yes uh, yeah that's really cool yeah mm. makes you uh, i've always wondered um when whenever i see like an ant or like a spider and there's sort of this like carelessness with its life and I'm just like so much bigger and it just has like no idea that I'm there and it's just like wandering around and it's just oh, I, I like slip and like take off my fleece and accidentally like crush it. I'm like, oh man, uh, I would hate for like the entity that is the equal scale larger than me to do that to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do feel in the waking world they're doing that to us kind of all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's been on my mind for a while. It's like, when is that happening? Because like, yeah, yeah and they're like when a lar like a much larger scale being becomes aware of a smaller being, like, yeah. Those moments of awareness are so powerful because their presence and awareness is so much bigger. And so their capacity for noticing contains so much more. It's like, it's profound. That's like really when it trains point. its eye on you. <laughs> yeah, like um, this really actually, I was reading some uh uh of the raw material, uh, or no, no, it was the channeling of another confederation entity, late Latos, I think it was. Um, mm. and these are entities that are, mm, they're at, they're in these higher higher realms, higher dimensions, and they're being channeled by people who are experienced channels in a group. Um, you know, and they say wild shit. Uh. But what this entity said is like it's really important. It's like it can be understated how important it is to do meditation daily, because what you're doing by doing meditation daily and opening yourself up to receiving is like on the day that one of these entities puts their awareness on you, you receive it. And actually, mm -hmm. there's only there's not that many windows in your life where that happens. So you actually need the daily practice to have the to, to to pick up on the windows where you're able to receive. Yeah. It's really interesting. So yeah. um, a theory that I've had that I think sort of works with this is that the other way to do it is to be interesting enough to sort of court their attention, right? So uh, you could sit so that you're open in case they look at you, or you can go out and be really weird and they will they will notice because of um, how you are tangled in the web of the world now, right? Like you are are participating in magic and sending off all this spark and creating like bigger resonance of you and other larger entities are looking at you. And then therefore it's enough to be like, I don't know. It's like if a spider got enough ambition to start like stealing the stuff in your room, right? <laughs> And you're like, oh, what's that spider up to? Wow. Like, it, you wouldn't have noticed it if it was just sitting in its web. But now it's it's really got your attention. <laughs> I think you're really right. And I think there's... Um, I, I've had a similar experience to this where I was kind of in relationship to... Uh, I think some extraterrestrials. I no longer in relationship to them. I try to keep it only to good beings. But at the time, they were sort of... Um, they would give me... They would be, like, offering... Oh, very consensual, which was nice. It was like, hey, do you want, um, like extra sensory capabilities um but the the implicit was like hey you know this is going to give you more power and like awareness but it's going to make your life harder um and mm -hmm. they gave me these choices like pretty much like it was like every couple of weeks for a few months um and i always said yes I'll give you the harder one like let's go down the harder more difficult but more awareness path of like hey what's actually going on um 
And it got to the point where I said yes to that, like, the fifth time in a row. And they, they were like, well, this is why we fucking love this guy. Um, so it's <laughs> like, um, there's something to, like, wow, like, look at the audacity of this entity and, like, the pure, like, what they want. And it's like, you're, it's like you're the underdog or something, I don't know. And they're just, like, really into it. They're like, he just keeps saying, like, he's going down, like, a hero's journey. And it's like, hey, this is, like, something that I want to be, a, you know, it's, like, impressive or, like, a, they they like it. I don't know how to put this, yeah. No, absolutely. There's So there's another, um, this is more at, like, the higher self layer where they are watching your various timeline options, right? Like, there's... Uh, I think of everything as sort of like um, there's lots of fingers and hands dipping into reality and stuff. And then there's like an organizing intelligence. And maybe this one's up at the hand watching what's happening with all of those fingers. But they kind of have this sense of somebody like watching a telenovela. And I became favored of this watcher at one point because I'm doing more interesting things than other timelines of me are doing. You know, like there's ones who became a corporate lawyer and there's one who became like she works for uh jim henson corporation which is great like good for her that's definitely a lifetime i wish i was in also but like i'm more interesting because i'm doing magic and so i get more support from the higher tiers than they do because meh. <laughs> yeah i think um there's a level of um unavoidable causality in the openness to like there's a reason that the magical spiritual timeline gets more uh consciousness and awareness and it's not because there's a preference for the higher entity it's because um the higher entity is like a like a river and like oh like there's a pipe that it can go Mm -hmm. down and it's big um so more water goes down uh yeah, and finding the things that expand your pipe is a pretty big fucking deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like that way of putting it. Like the same way like an ant would be conscious of like where where the food is and where like how to like and maybe not even how to move its legs, but like yeah. And like the pheromone. Yeah. It has like a bit of a two D experience and then we have like a three D experience where like, whoa, an ant and then we like know about objects and things and there are things like that, and then they know, you know, the next the next scale up of that. So when they look at us, and we're just here thinking like, oh yeah, three D stuff, and they're like, oh, <laughs> he has no idea about all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we're the ants outside of Flatland right now. Yeah. Oh, I just had a great. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I just had a great realization. Um, oh my god. So there is this um, uh, in the law of one. There's a description, uh, which is a channeling of a sixth density entity. Um, there's a description of how second density, so animals, come to third density, which is like humans. And then humans go to fourth density, which is the next thing. Um, and the way that a lot of animals actually go from second density to third density, and, and trees as well. So one example of a second density entity going to third density is a tree that's given like a lot of love by all the people around it. Is it pets? Is pets one of the accesses for animals? And they exactly, have yeah. And then and then pets is how animals come from second density to third density. Um because they're yeah, they're getting all this love and attention and we're sharing their sh- we're sharing our consciousness with them and our awareness with them. And they start to like and this is one of I have three dogs and um they do like i love wild animals i probably won't keep pets again in the future when they're no longer in my life but like they get so much from my consciousness like they become so differentiated when i trip the dogs are tripping they haven't taken any mushrooms but they are tripping and it's fascinating you know so the the realization here is actually that um mm, some of us become pets of the higher entities and then yeah it's like and then we get a bunch of awareness uh and you know and oh, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah and if you think about it like you know a pet isn't someone it's just they're just aware of less things in a pet's world it's just like food and sleep and you know you like hit it and it's like what the fuck i don't know what's going on like or you love it and it's like oh uh, i don't know why this is happening but it's nice um and <laughs> 
and it's still it like, it, it's just living its life right it's just living its life um uh, and I guess in the same way, we're just living our lives, but for some of us, yeah, we become sort of favored or in closer contact more consistently with um, these higher entities like gods or goddesses or whatever, and then boom. Treats. And then- <laughs> oh, your microphone cut out the start of that. Can you start to say it again? They give us names and they give us treats and they give us little special jobs to do and cute outfits. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's so real. Yeah, that's super real. That's like uncomfortably real. I, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, uh, and this is actually really, this is actually very, um, it's backed up in, in, in so the, in the law of one, the channeler, um, when the channeler channels the entity, the higher density entity, she's in, she's taken into their space and care, their realm, while she's channeling. <laughs> and that actually resulted in huge physiological and, like, awareness changes for her over time, um, where her, like, body body was getting more, sort of more in tune with their their realm. And I'm guessing that's a similar thing going on here, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. I have to reread Love One, except that I got told not to read any more books. <laughs> it's okay. I can. I can. I don't know. Mm, yeah, I'm still into it, so maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can share some tidbits maybe that I like, tied you over. My special dispensation, so that we can talk about Love One. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not reading books. I'm talking to my friend. Yeah. <laughs> See if they buy it. Yeah. Uh. And little glimpses being like what do we even make of it <laughs> what the, what's going on? What yeah. they know you know the next the next scale up of that so when they look at us and we're just here thinking like oh yeah 3d stuff and they're like oh, <laughs> he has no idea about all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah we're the ants outside of flatland right now getting little glimpses being like what do we even make of it <laughs> <laughs> what the, what's going on yeah very appropriate to the pet conversation we're just yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm just meditating. I thought it froze. What happened to me? There have been a few times where I was really still and I was like, what happened? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I can check. Oh, checking the time. Two minutes and 40 seconds. It's impossible to tell when you're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Time dilation, having fun. So yeah, so I was actually curious about, um, like, the, your experience with groups uh, especially in regards to journeying and, and practice. Um, just because it's like, for me, I've always been, I've always been very solo. Uh, and then, and then with it, with that, it's like a lot of limitations. It's like, oh, this might be dangerous. Oh, I don't have like a shaman who can like, you know, help me out. Right. Uh, I did my research. What would you say? When I did my research with the city, um, that was a time when I should have had like an entire cabal of practitioners with me. Like I should have had people making sure I was safe. I should have had people checking in on my connection with it. I should have had like a backup team for the material. And instead I just sort of like spent six months dashing myself, my health, my mental health against trying to commune with this. I mean, like it broke me open, broke magic open, made everything like really clearly elucidated in ways that they hadn't been before but like shit if i had just had like a circle of stalwart mates to do it with it would have been so much better <laughs> and this is when you're communing with a city being for the for the yeah. folks at home yeah mm. yeah and it's in, it seems like yeah like the the most like that's really what the group what you get out of the group stuff is that loving support for each other mm. which like makes everything easier and it's like it can sound like you know um it can sound like oh loving support it's like but no it's like it's an energy that is actually required for a lot of work and an isolated practitioner like it's so lonely it's so lonely to do this and to have like that is the thing about law of one when you read like how dedicated the team is together and how what like what good care of each other they take like it's very important and it's very uh it's just non-present right now in part because like nobody's in practice lineages and so everybody's rediscovering the same stuff over and over again and then nobody's getting to like the high tier stuff that we're trying to talk about doing 
And then the other part of it is I just think the atomization of society where people are, we're just more alone. We're just more alone right now. Yeah. Um, and just to like, so during the Law of One, the Chandler, who is Carla, was um, constantly being put through a lot of pain and stress and difficulty. And whenever they asked the entity for like what they could do to help Carla, they were like, the most important thing is that you continue like sharing your loving appreciation of her and like she shares her like problems and like that's actually like the most important thing yeah the thing's yeah. a lesson lesson for me at least <laughs> is like the quality of life difference for a practitioner to move from single scale to larger scale um one to two. Yeah. yeah so one of the things that i noticed right away because i started journeying um, and it became like with the group and then it became the cornerstone slash bedrock of my practice. I had been sort of doing material witchcraft before that with like an eye towards everything being like about figuring out the theory and understanding why it works as opposed to like the practice at that point in time. And then I started journeying and I was kind of like, well, I need that way less. I need to touch things way less. I can just go be in the world. Um, but what I noticed right away is that it was a lot harder for me to access the, the realm itself at first. And um, it was like, I would put on drums because that's the other thing is part of the journey circle is that you drum together and you dance together and you create all that energy together, right? And then the shaman takes over with the drumming and everybody lies down in journeys. And um, in that experience, I found it difficult. Like I would do something, like I journeyed one time with Woodpecker and he turned into Thunderbird and it was great, but it was also like just mostly psychedelic data. Actually, bird consciousness is mostly psychedelic data. It's like electromagnetic. It doesn't have a lot of like when you- I didn't get to say this at the time, but I was just gonna say I love birds. I'm a huge fan. Uh, uh, <laughs> partner with animal consciousness it has a lot of stories to tell you about itself the birds are really like look at this pattern information what's happening here you know, like, <laughs> why don't we just fly it's great but it um another thing with know birds first is uh distributed intelligence happens a lot so like a little bit of brain over here a little bit of brain over here a little bit of brain over here you can really tell <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that was like what I should be looking to expect either with birds. And like, I'm again, I'm in that surrender space. I'm not looking necessarily to create narrative. The, the narrative isn't already happening for me, um, but it did feel a lot more concrete. And I do believe that uh, the egregore is like the biggest thing that you're creating for yourself, right? I actually wanted to talk about that. It's like the, when you, when you, it's like the, the expectation and the intention can get like so um, off track when you actually end up connecting to and interfacing with entities where it's like, oh, I wanted, I wanted like a healing session for my past self. And then you connect to, uh, bird consciousness and it's like, <laughs> and it's like, uh, and it's like, it's, um, there's something, there's something about the difference between those two modes which is uh very convincing to the human organism i think yeah yeah like that shared energy together of like let's invite a creature now that we're creating that's overseeing what we're doing together and then um what the gift of it is is that uh the group starts it's like you're looking in on something from a lot of different perspectives right and so the group is able to start saying well your journeys aren't necessarily the same at all right but you say well when i encountered bad i experienced her this way and someone says when i encountered bad i experienced her that way and you start to get this really robust feeling but then also like someone will tell a story and they'll be like i was a baby bat and i was being held and suckled by my mother and then another baby bat was born and i'll be like i was that baby bat you know and so so that's really a joyous piece that is uh, completely missing. And then the next piece for me is getting together this to do with people who I trust, who want to go deeper, because this was a journey group, like everybody was really lovely. A lot of people were older, just like a good grounded energy, a lot of wholesome, very wholesome, but not necessarily that interested in like getting weird with it or seeing how far out we can go or what else we can touch. And I do 
this is the other thing is that I remain cognizant that the healing layer is the most important first, right? Like anybody I'm journeying with, I want to know, like, how are you doing with that? Where is your relationship to your shadow? What's integrated? What's going to come up? What's not going to come up, you know? And um, having that level of self-awareness for doing it, I think is part of like, I don't know, the more I hang out with the Buddhists, the more I hear a lot about people being like afraid and a lot of risks and stuff that just is not part of the conversation when you're over in the witchcraft, Western magic uh, part, of, part of things. They're just like, over there, they're like, just do it. It's going to be great. This is your power. You have to claim it. The Buddhists are like, you might go into psychosis. <laughs> I, I just want to say about this one. It's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good things to have in like, it's going to go well and like positivity. Uh, and, you know, in its most, in its most like um developed sense, right? It's like you're fully connected to your heart and your intent is fully pure but there's also just a lot of power in like no it's actually fine like it's mm. it is a good thing and it is good and it is going well and it is you know yeah i don't know hmm. yeah no i agree with that i thought um it was interesting to me because i was looking for like i started uh getting into the buddhism stuff after having um I'm not going to get into it for the podcast, but after an experience where I was like, it's important that we have discernment before we do this magic. And um, so that's really what I've been looking for. But then I watch people, um, they don't have discernment, they have skepticism. They don't have discernment, oh. they have fear. You know? <laughs> so beautifully put, yeah. And I mean, this is um, this is something which has come up for me again and again, and it's a, an ability that I have like developed, um, and it's the the ability that I've developed is is discernment, and it's like if I see someone, I know everything that's going on about them, and I can and I can it's like it's just obvious, it's just present, and that's actually when you go to like Shan, um, all of the enlightened masters are like when you get to enlightenment. This is what you can do. You can discern uh, exactly what's going on, and like they put it extremely clearly. I'm going to read some, uh, and it seems like it's like this this knowledge that it's like discernment comes from enlightenment it just isn't present in a lot of people. Uh, I don't get it. Um, what's this? <laughs> If you have not managed to understand clearly, it is because your enlightenment is not true. Like someone ignorant of medicine claiming to be a doctor, you cannot discern when people understand, and you cannot tell when they do not understand. You cannot discern at all whether or not they have any insight. Then how can you help people? How can you teach people? You must examine reality through and through before you can. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It, that's, it's all, over, like, I could, there's so many different, I could just go to a random page. Like, and it's just there. Hmm. Oops, this is not this is the commentary. <laughs> Sorry, I love I love this book. You have to send me the information because I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, I should just pick up that book. <laughs> yeah, I'll send it over. It's instant Zen. Um waking up in the present. Great. Uh look, people. If you're about to misunderstand your whole life, how can you not go to someone to find certainty? So it's like, hey, if someone has discernment, then you go to them for dis like because you can discern. So like that's that what you do. What I want to say about this too, because like um, one of the things that's very frustrating when you do have this discernment is that you'll be talking to someone and you'll see something very clearly about them and you'll tell it to them and they'll tell you, oh no, that's not true, and you're like. I literally know that it's true about you and I'm sorry that you're not in the space where you were able to see that it's true about you. And I'm like, I'm I, sorry that I, this is, this is a, almost a trigger for me. It's like, um, I'm so, so cautious about who I, what, what I say to people. And it's like only with my closest of closest of friends who fully recognize that I have the power that I do. will I say something like I noticed in your hips, uh, your mother is latching onto your and causing fear uh, and it's and it's completely fucked over your life and your energy right now 
Like I would ne- like because it's like it's um there's so ma- so- there's so many layers of like oh like they they know something about me that I was like hiding from myself that I like if I have any inclination towards ego I'm gonna try and deny and avoid and you, it's just not possible with someone who's not super not ready to hear it yeah. I had a situation recently with a friend um, where before I knew, did the tarot reading, I knew what the problem was. I knew that it was related to um, her being afraid that she wouldn't be accepted in her relationships. And then the cards come out and I'm like, oh, is this what's going on? And she tells me no. And I'm like, OK, well, let's just draw some more cards. We'll check back in. I shuffle back up. Two of the three cards I drew came back up and I just asked her very gently. I'm like, are you sure? And she just starts crying. And I'm like, yeah, because that's what we knew. And I'm sorry you made me get the cards. I'm sorry you made me ask them twice. But <laughs> that's beautiful, though. I love that you you you, yeah, you kept her in her space and she eventually came around. That's like a that's almost like the perfect way to do it with someone who's not not ready to hear it. Um, yeah. And uh, just on a quick note, I did it. I did a. um reading with a psychic today and i i did before that i did a reading with another psychic and the first psychic um they would say something and then i'd be like oh i'm not sure about that um and they'd be like oh uh maybe it's like this then uh and it was it was pretty good i had some clearing i got some information and the second psychic she was like incredible and just like boom 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 like get rid of this and then she'd say something and i'd be like I'm not sure about that. And she'd be like, um, well, I mean, that's, that's what's coming up. So it's like, of course, this is the true thing. And then what, what would happen would be, you know, we'd figure out how, how it actually worked because it was like, they were like, oh, so, you know, um, someone close to you died at this certain age. And I'd be like, what? Uh, nah, that's not, that isn't, that's not right. And they're like, oh, actually it's this person's energy in your body. And I was like, oh yeah, that did happen. That exact thing for her. Yeah, so there's like there's something to there's something to trust in yeah. your discernment as well, and like really just like not 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 being unshakable on that. That's really powerful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very it's like a good improv energy where you come to someone and you say yes and instead of saying no, where you're like yes and maybe they didn't die what are we looking for really you know <laughs> yeah and and to me it, oh sorry are, right no no because no. people are picking up stuff really accurately and like sometimes it can be like with my friend or whatever where it's resistance and sometimes it can be their filters or biases which is one of the things that i notice a lot when i get readings from other people is they'll like tell me what cards they are and they'll tell me what they're meaning for them. And I'll look at them and I'll be like, okay, but also that card always means this thing. And I can see that you would have no way of knowing that, but here it is telling me this thing again, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it's, it's definitely, um, yeah, it's like the personal relationship, but then the person who's being read's personal relationship to the thing as well. Um, yeah. Oh, what are we, hmm. Trusting, trusting, improv energy. Yes, and yeah. Um, and there's something as well. It's like when, when you, when you have that unshakableness, being like, oh no, that's not the case for me. It's not doubt. It's refinement. It's not skepticism. Yeah. It's not denying. It's, it's, it's being open to it while reporting like your own experience, honestly. And like, yes. that's actually what you need like that's actually being scientific and being scientific right. about spirituality is is the openness yeah, yeah. exactly yeah oh I, I was this close to start shouting about that then but that's <laughs> um over there they're like just do it it's going to be great this is your power you have to claim it the buddhists are like you might go into psychosis <laughs> i i mean um it's it's far enough it's like hey the way I translate all of the, all of the um, Buddhist warning stuff is like, be aware of your body. And to be clear, not Buddhist, not Buddhist, fake Buddhist, not fake Buddhist, just not Buddhist. It's like Buddhism is is great all this stuff, but yeah, what the Buddhism that's like, let's be scientific, rationalist, materialist about it. Not Buddhism, but anyway, it's far enough. It's like, hey, the way I translate all of the, all of the um. 
Isn't that the problem? One stuff is uh, like isn't that the problem with all of these isms, right? Is that people are given permission to call themselves something that may or may not have anything to do with what that thing actually is. And then everyone is operating across this series of shorthands without any depth knowledge about what's actually happening with each other. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's like this whole, even the idea that there is a thing that it, that actually is, is pretty foreign to most people because to even come to that realization... You have to go really deep on one thing to know that it's true for everything. Um, yeah. And people just haven't done that where they're like, oh, there is a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they've just gotten every piece of information uh, from like a meme or like a 15 minute YouTube video. Or... <laughs> yeah, just not from personal experience, not from like... I've, yeah. see, I've experienced this. I've felt this. This is real. Like... Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, nobody's doing the gnosis thing. Nobody's going to primary. I shouldn't say nobody. That's a bad habit that I have. Many people are not doing gnosis. Many people are not going to primary sources. Many people are not, uh, are only looking at the things that point to things and then considering that good enough and then aren't, um, this happens in witchcraft too, where people will get like really obsessed with studying it. And they'll spend like 12 years reading books about magic and never like, I don't know, draw a pentacle or light a candle. And you're like, well, okay, if that's what you want from yourself. But like, why? Why did you stop? What's going on? Yeah. And I, I just want to say it's like, um, you know, no, one, no one's to blame. It's like um, when you got your nine to five and you're stuck in like, got to work mindset and... You know, then you come home and it's three hours to make your food and get your clothes ready and do your things. And you got like one hour spare and you do like an hour of meditation. Like, of course, it's going to be hard to realize the truths of the universe. Yeah. And it's just absolutely. how culture is built. Yeah, no, I think that that's absolutely true. And that like, even if you are doing that consistent hour of meditation, you're getting like mostly healing from what your day just put you through you know yeah 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 there's something to living it there's something to living it and that's actually like in a lot of in the map in like the the insight map where there's four it's four paths it's like first path is like the first taste second path is the second taste third path you're living it now mm. and it's day to day and it's all the time um and it's like and it's and it's the process of like the spiritual and the the normal merging until it's like not even a thing where you're like oh it's spiritual it's just what your life is now yeah and like and you need you need that step that step's really important there's no like enlightenment experience until you've done that step yeah yeah mm. be aware of your body keep having friends and <laughs> um this is advice it's from like, this uh, rationalist material. Invite so. you know, and and don't uh, watch out for bad entities. It's kind mm. of and the, they don't even say that. Honestly, I'm being very generous here. The advice in most like Buddhist things that I've seen is like, oh, you're going through like an entity experience where they're connecting to your body and like opening you up and all this stuff. It's like, oh, ignore that, ignore that entities. Don't ignore that. like that's not even a thing. Ignore that, ignore that. There's no other realms. It's like keep yeah. doing your meditation instructions, and it's like, hey, no wait. Like, there's a goddess contacting this guy, and if he just had, like, one inch of devotional intent more during his meditations, he would be going way, way faster, and you just told him to ignore it. It's like, what the fuck? Sure, it worked yeah. for you, bro, but... I was talking to somebody who, uh, you know, who, who spent, uh, like, ten years ignoring that impulse, and then when they finally opened up to it, they were like, oh my god, there's all this power here, there's all this reality here, and my training has been teaching me to ignore it. Yeah, and I, I think that just comes from um, being so disconnected in this culture from what it was like in the past. It's like, it's like even like forty years ago, the subconscious was a primary topic of conversation for like in most circles, where it's like, whoa, there's this amazing thing called the subconscious, which is like full of symbology, and we're like investigating it. And then you go back like forty more years, it's like magic's row. Uh, and it's like, there's all these different practitioners for all this different, like a hundred years, it's like, what's even going on there? And it's like, uh, uh, that combined with like, hey, like you have past lives and you have all of these connections from these past lives and you live through all these different eras. It's like, you need, 
like this lens that you're in right now in this incarnation that's so ex- like exclusive of ex- excludes everything else is just so bad for be yeah. coming into your real power of what you've been brought here to do in this incarnation yeah so there's two things that came up for me there one is that like when i learned that everybody who does who's successful at science was also secretly doing magic and they just don't tell you it like they weren't secretly doing magic they were publicly doing magic and they just don't tell you in history that was like so mind-blowing for me where it's like they were all alchemists they were all you know belonged to secret societies they all believed very fervently in god like just and then they just wash all of that away and it's like what's going on and then um the other thing that that sparked for me is um i have differing opinions on how successful buddhism is as a project but one of the things that i think they've really been successful with is that most of us have buddhist past lives and so therefore the information resonates and i think that that's really a marvelous thing and very interesting to consider and kind of funny <laughs> that's beautiful i love that yeah mm. Uh, mm, I'll go back to the video, I guess. There's something stupid. And it's like, and here's some, like, protection for bad entities. That's, like, the best form of it. And the first two of, like, hey, you know, like, um, be aware of your body and, like, st- keep having friends. It's kind of man advice. It's kind of man advice. Sorry, man. It's like, it's like, that. that's hard for, for people. Um, yeah. Who are like I don't know they're they're on like computers like eight hours a day. Me, um, you know it's hard it's hard to be like ah oh, I gotta I have to be aware of my body all the time and uh like not ignore everything else and focus like only on this and it's like it's more multi dimensional and it's all layered and it all makes sense and it's interconnected. Um, well from what I've noticed I mean most but I mean it's all generalizations but like a, a lot of women in their practice it's like the being aware of your body and like not ruining your whole life is like kind of an, an established yeah, norm. Yeah it's like already established. <laughs> yeah. yeah and and also like the interconnected thing where it's like stories and symbols and like dreams it's all it's all like it's all one weave for yeah. for for women it seems like men it's like compartments and then like maximize uh yeah which is you know yeah i mean it is what it the the gift that men get is that they're better at action items in this realm like in ways that i can't do sometimes or i'm just like oh if only i could linearize this wouldn't that be great wouldn't i be so powerful (laughs) yeah you are powerful but you also satan is calling uh is a problem usually (laughs) yeah Mm. yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. bare minimum what we're doing all the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it seems like um yeah. but hey um yeah uh, but hey the nothing it's actually so this is something worth commenting <laughs> on i think is that um i spent a lot of time in queer materialist spaces and then i moved into trying to articulate a- what is a queer materialist space could you explain that um so yeah i was communist so everybody was a materialist and we were also doing queer theory so queer communism materialism and then i started getting like uh karen barad is a new materialist and so that's like queer feminist quantum physics spirituality stuff like i'm a really big fan and um she's where i get the um her ontology is called a gentle realism and her whole thing is it it's just like um, nothing exists when it doesn't have to differentiate itself. Like, like you were saying, um, there's no suffering because there's no difference between us, but then the friction arises and the friction is the agential cut and the agential cut says, oh, now there are two beings here because we had to have that friction. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. There's going to be something in science soon related to all this that we're talking about. And it's going to be huge. (laughs) Yeah. Mm. A lot of this stuff through a queer lens and then the more I hang out with people who are like super spiritual it gets very like women are very good and natural at this and men are maybe going to (laughs) struggle yeah yeah I mean it's uh, 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 and I just want to say as well um, there's first of all Bankei Yataku who is doing um, he was like unborn zen in Japan and he was this huge uh, teacher of enlightenment was one of the first people who was like uh yeah, women are just just as good. In fact, they're better sometimes because they don't think as much. They're not as intellectual. Um, and also, I just want to say, like, Buddhism is so big on these people are born better and more able and more functional. And these people, like, they're 
basically subhuman. They're like animals, people. Um, and it's like, hey, that's worth considering as a viewpoint. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I'm one of the people who is like, as reading this description, it's like pe- people who are motivated by, um, like the the passion of the of the thing, and it's like you can tell by how they walk, and they like walk like, like they're like slumping and like dragging their feet, and they're not conscious. And I was like, oh hey, <laughs> that's me. Um, yeah, but hey, I did okay. Who knows? Maybe I'm terrible compared to some super powerful conscious being who. Uh, yeah, and they have like different types of people. So some people are like motivated by the intellect, which is the same as being motivated by hate, because they their main bias is to notice like where things are wrong, and to figure out ways that they can be better. Um, yeah. Oh no, Matt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, in person in your life that the other the audience doesn't know. About, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. but yeah, there's there's something to like yeah, types of people being real. Uh those people having biases which are relevant to different uh, like their capacity to do things. Um mm. and man and woman is one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just how it is. Uh, uh yeah. and it would be it would be nice if it wasn't but it's just how it is. And and it's like <laughs> yeah. you get some uh you know, and there's there's definitely like a, a nice way that like the masculine energy can be used to bring rise to, to what that good is. things in spirituality. <laughs> but the majority of the masculine path is like, oh shit, I need to do feminine energy more. Like I'm way too yang. Let me get more yeah. yin. Like my whole path has been like just the all yin, all yin, all yin. And I'm still I don't know, who knows about my balance, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh I mean, the in space is amazing. If I could just hang out there and still be successful, like in the <laughs> world, it would be the best. <laughs> it's the eternal challenge for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And just be like, just, I don't know, I'll just hang here. You can just bring me grapes. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, more ranting. Also, sex is really, really important for spiritual practice it's an energy transfer between two beings and it can be mm-hmm. ascended usually for most people it's just in the sacral and the root uh which is like the male usually transfers physical energy the female usually transfers like this connection to intuition that the male can get um and you can actually like if you're both being conscious in that practice then you can have like a uh, heart heart transfers and then you're both having a more open heart chakra you can have throat transfers you can have third eye you can have a crown and it's like uh you know in in a conscious and unified and both open to it and ascendant sort of sexual practice between between man and man and women maybe maybe men can do it too i don't know um it's like you can get like that there's a lot there's a lot there there's a lot there yeah into higher levels of reality like you absolutely can like behold the soul structure from outside of it through being able to have uh that facility with each other's chakras yeah and i I feel like it's it's a fundamental it's actually a fundamental part of of spiritual practice which is completely basically eliminated uh in in like current cultural viewpoints yeah so I have to add that um, I before when I was just like sharing the kinarchy stuff, I was having a really hard time uh, like connecting with people and stuff. I started talking about sex magic and all of a sudden it, people are like, do you want to talk to me? Do you want to answer my questions over here? Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. And there's one way of that, which is like, oh, sex, ha ha ha, you know, but I think it's also it's like there's this need, right? There's this need, which is like... Hey, right? yeah had their own experiences that they don't know how to articulate or they didn't feel safe going to resources for. Yep. Yeah. It's like, mm, and the body knows the body. This is what I, I've always found. It's like, I, I use sex, uh, sexual attraction as a, like a, a guide. I'm like, this person has some energy that I want to get from them that my body knows that it needs, which is going to be good for me. And like, and yeah, we can get it through conversation. And I usually do get it through conversation, and I'm like, ah, and now, oh, I'm not trying to this person anymore, and and it's like there is that there's this awareness in the body where it's like, I need this energy. 
from this person and i know that sex is the way to do it but like in 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 our landscape we're like oh what i'm uh am i have to get married to this person now or like what's happening like i'm in love like what's and and there's just not this knowledge of of energy transfer and sex is the mechanism for it and sexual attraction as the indicator for energy transfer that it's just uh, yeah so much confusion it, yeah it does seem like it's a big opportunity space around being able to figure out how to do it and like have it be cuz like i used to i used to be involved in like kink and stuff like that and i've always said that i theoretically saw opportunities where people could like have brief connections that would be actually like empowering and actually totally consensual and all these other things like my critiques of the community are that none of it is those things <laughs> um but the reality is that I always sense that there is a way in which you can have this like knowledge that what you have for each other is completely wholesome and that you have that this exchange will be like complete pure love and all of these other things. But it might also only be an afternoon and you might never see each other again. And that's still totally fine because that's just what you needed from each other, you know. And when you consider it in terms of this like spiritual, like my body know like the guy who I mentioned before, I got more of my soul through contact with him and he freaked out like that, like he freaked out. But I knew from the very beginning that that was where more of me was and that I had to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, uh, you know, there's people out there who are like, you know, mm, they have some student and they're like, yeah, suck my dick and you get enlightened. And it's like, oh, it's not really how it works, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. What's going on with me in the podcast? So what was the shift for you where you went from my solo practice isn't as powerful because I kind of need this egregore to like bring, like have enough energy for me to go to a realm and, oh, I can just do this solo now. Was it, is it just diligence? Is it just practice? Was it like a higher level of awareness you're like oh shit that's how everything works or it was a higher level of awareness it was basically cultivating my relationship to these realms so everything i'm about to say is true but it was really other people needed my help and that clear like um it just clarified things and this is something you and i have talked about before where when i'm like Oh, I'm going to go on a journey. What animal do I want to see? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. What, <laughs> what do I want to do for myself? I'm not really sure. But then someone else comes to me and they're like, I've been struggling with X. And I'm like, I know exactly what to do. I know exactly where to go. I know exactly who to talk to. I know exactly what to ask. And so that did a lot for that too, is it started to be like, okay, well, I'm doing this for these specific, like to help this person or to set this spell work or to speak to this entity for this intention. And all of that involved other people and just like getting that additional information, boom, potentiating my practice. Almost all of my energy body awareness comes from talking to someone, connected to the energy body, guided to a certain part that I wasn't aware of before, explain that part to them um, as as I'm learning it. Oh, like now this is a part of my integrated system. Yeah. It's so huge to the, um, like interacting with others is how we develop our spiritual practice yeah yeah um in my relationship to my own chakras as realms and then essentially like as i cultivated my own chakras as realms i all the portals i need are inside of me and i can just walk through them and it was like oh okay <laughs> and that was a big big difference but that came from like essentially journeying with the group did things to liberate each like a dragonfly eating away the film on my third eye gave me insight that i hadn't had before vision that i hadn't had before and um Not here. then i also um, it also uh journeying gave me the glimpses of my chakras as landscapes before i knew they were my chakras like i knew i was starting in my heart which is a salt cavern with this beautiful snake throne um, and then I went down a side passageway one time across this volcano and then down into a, an animal realm. But that was where Bat was. Um, and it was later that I was like, that's my solar plexus. 
that volcano. It's so familiar to me. I get it now. And there was another one where I'd gone to like a beautiful crystal uh, lagoon, um, like one of those like enclosed in a cave with the perfect clear sand beach and stuff. And then I was like, that's my sacral chakra. And so having them be glimpsed on my way to do other things was also a really cool piece of this and also translates across that it was zooming around my body. I had this sense of moving from here to here. Really beautiful, yeah. Um, so it's almost like, yeah, the the process of becoming better at journeying was this equal to the process of seeing chakras as places that you journey to. So, like, I became really uh, ardent about a project that I was working on. And so that became, like, a really good motivator for the journeying. Because before, when it was just sort of like, well, let me poke around and see what I need to heal. Because that's the other thing is I'm a very good healer. So sometimes it's like, well, do I need to go to the medicine realm of an animal? Or can I just, like, sit with myself for 30 seconds, right? Like, <laughs> um but journeying is healing and it's fun and it's necessary. And if I don't do it, like at least once a week, I start to go crazy a little bit. Um, where was I going? I lost where I was going. <laughs> Any ideas in the present? It was probably what I just told us about. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's that's the that's the power of the format. You like everything that you wanted to say, you say, you yeah, get to say. Great. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, could have been my intent. Yeah, um, I, I was I was pretty focused on asking this specific question at the time, and I think I might have like yeah, so, <laughs> hmm, in in sort of like Buddhist land. There's three. There's three things that you gotta get good at. There's morality. Good question. Um, <laughs> insight which is like enlightenment stuff and then concentration and concentration is like uh you know you focus on a like after image of fire and eventually you get to like buddha realms with enough concentration on that after image um and it seems to be missing for me in those three things that you cultivate this sort of imaginal connection everything's a being and it's all just relationships where it's like, hey, there's actually not much discipline here. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious how you how you would um would you see that as another axis, how, or is it related to concentration? Like, what's the um how would you like break that down for someone who is in like a oh I just concentrate on my breath all the time and eventually it, um, it does something. I I think that it's actually an ethics, right? Because oh, yeah. when we recognize that everything is a being and everything is a realm and that we are interwoven of all beings and all realms, now we have a responsibility to the integrity of how these things interrelate. And that's been, actually, that's been sort of like the th between journeying, which is sort of like, it's Tantra in a, in a lot of, like a lot of Western magic is Tantra reskinned. And that's what's been taken out of the delivery of Buddhism to the West, right? Um, and so you take that, like we're journeying, we're in this imaginal space, we're connected to things, we let the story into us, we let the deity into us, all of this is here and thriving and thrumming and flourishing. And then you add, and now I'm ethically responsible to it because I'm aware of it. Beautiful, yeah. And uh, that completely goes one to one with my experience as well. It's like, the more that you open your heart and like the love for things, the more that you notice the interconnectedness and then noticing the interconnectedness is noticing everything's intelligent and oh look i'm being visited by goddesses <laughs> it's like yeah. the, it's like the <laughs> the steps yeah um hey mandy that was great for the first part of the podcast no way uh, that's the end yeah let's let's go to the reaction uh yeah, let's keep doing this forever <laughs> yeah I, I i i can't believe that's the end what's going on <laughs> hello welcome to the podcast Oop. i'm here yeah wow uh any any last words for the people watching any last thoughts you should all journey don't be afraid it's yours claim it <laughs> wow beautiful uh last words from me thanks for watching yeah <laughs>